Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to use the color temperature tool found in GIMP 2.10. I'll also be providing an in-depth look at color temperature as a concept and this is actually a lesson from my Fundamentals of Photo Editing in GIMP class on Skillshare and of course I'll provide a link to the full class in the description of this video. And don't worry this is the full lesson on color temperature and not just a snippet or a clip from the lesson. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP extras in return, including free access to this Fundamentals of Photo Editing in GIMP class for bronze level supporters and above. Or you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Photo Editing Masterclass from Beginner to Pro on Udemy. And I'll include a link to this as well as all all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. In this lesson, I'll be showing you how to use the color temperature image adjustment tool. And this tool allows you by definition to adjust the color temperature of the light source in an image in Kelvin. It allows you to change the white balance of an image during the image editing process. So when you are white balancing your camera for an image, you are setting the color temperature base for white. And essentially what this means is you are taking something white that is in frame and you are telling your camera that this is going to be pure white. This is going to be the representation of pure white for your image. And then your camera is going to set the color temperature for everything else, for all the other colors in the photo based on that white that you set. So you always want to make sure that you properly white balance your camera before you take any photos, before you, you know, open up your photos into GIMP. Most cameras are going to have an auto white balance feature, again, using a white card to set the white balance of the photo, but it also helps to know just the general uh, temperature, color temperature of the light in the room or the environment where you're taking your photo. So for example, light bulbs typically fall into one of three ranges. The first of which is soft white, which falls in the 2700 Kelvin to 3000 Kelvin range. Next, you have bright white or cool white, and that falls within the 3500 to 4100 Kelvin range. And finally, you have daylight, and that is going to fall within the 5000 to 6500 Kelvin range. A good rule of thumb for remembering what color a certain color temperature is going to produce is to remember that the lower that number is in Kelvin, typically the closer that color is going to be to orange, and then the higher that number is in Kelvin, the closer that color is going to be to something like white or blue. Even though daylight light bulbs typically fall within the 5,000 to 6,500 Kelvin range, it is important to note that daylight actually has a variety of color temperatures depending on what time of day you are taking your photo if you are actually outside. So for instance, the magic hour or the golden hour, which typically happens somewhere around sunrise and sunset, is going to have a much warmer color and therefore a lower color temperature. So that's usually gonna fall into the 2800 Kelvin range. Overcast daylight is going to have a slightly higher color temperature at somewhere between 6500 to 7500 Kelvin. And that is going to produce more of a white color. And finally, a blue sky day or more of a clear day is going to produce the highest color temperature temperature at somewhere between 9,000 and 12,000 Kelvin. And this is why a blue sky day or a clear day is going to produce more of a blue color. So to sum all that up about daylight, it's going to be warmer when it's closer to sunrise or sunset, and it's going to be cooler when it is closer to the middle of the day or is a clear or overcast day. So now let's dive into GIMP and open up this tool and we can access the color temperature tool by going to colors, color temperature, and here is the color temperature dialog box and you'll see that you have two sliders here. One is going to be original temperature and the other will be intended temperature. And both of these are set in temperature based on Kelvin. So these are both set by default to 6,500 Kelvin. And you can see when I hover over here, it says estimated temperature of the light source in Kelvin. The image was taken with. And then below that, it says corrected estimation of the temperature of the light source in Kelvin. So the original temperature is going to be the white balance that you set within the camera when you took the original photo. And then of course the intended temperature is going to be the temperature that you meant to set your camera to, or maybe the temperature that you wanted the image to be. So you may have taken your photo in the original temperature of the room, but you actually want the final photo to be a warmer photo or a cooler photo. Maybe you're going for a certain effect or a certain mood in your image, or maybe you just don't think that the white balance that you set in your camera 
looks the best for the particular photo that you took. So whatever the reason, you can adjust the color temperature here within GIMP. And keep in mind that whenever you turn the intended temperature up, it's going to make the final image appear warmer. So you'll see that as I drag my intended temperature up, my image starts to get more of a yellowish orange color. And then on the other hand, if I turn my intended temperature down, so if this number is lower than the original temperature number, that's going to make my photo cooler or more of a bluish color. And when it comes to color temperature effects, I always say when you have an image that looks cool, so for example, there's snow in the background and your model is wearing winter clothes, it's good to turn down the intended temperature so that the overall image is going to have that cooler look. It's gonna be more blue and just give the viewer a feeling that they're cold while they're looking at it. And then on the other hand, if you have an image that looks really warm, like let's say it's in the summer, it's outside and the person's wearing shorts and a t-shirt, and maybe you just want the overall image to look warmer, you can go ahead and increase the intended temperature and that's going to give your overall photo a warmer look. Another example is if somebody's sitting by a fire or something and you want them to just you know appear warmer or you want the overall composition to have a warmer feel. So for this particular photo we have a mixture of color temperatures and I'm going to go ahead and close out this color temperature dialog box temporarily and I'm going to come over here and grab my paintbrush tool just to demonstrate. So we have some warmer light bulbs here this is artificial light, obviously, and then there's actually some artificial light coming over from this side, and you can see it hitting the bench right here. And then if I hit X on my keyboard and switch over to my white color here, there's actually some daylight coming in from this window here, so that's going to be more of a white or a bluish white color. So this is producing a mixture of color temperatures in my image. So when that's the case, it's sort of up to you as the artist or the photo editor as to what you want your final color temperature to be. Do you want it to be warmer? Do you want it to emulate that artificial light in the room? Or do you want it to be bluer or more of a white color and more so emulate the daylight in the room or just make the image look colder overall? So in this case, I'm gonna hit Control Z to get rid of these markings. And I'm gonna go to colors color temperature. So I'm gonna assume since the daylight coming from the window was fairly white that the color was probably somewhere around 5600 Kelvin. And that means that when I click on my intended temperature, you'll see that this image now looks warmer since this corrected number is much higher than the original. And now I can play around with this slider until I get the look I want. So if I come all the way back here to 5600, there's no change. But if I turn it up, it's going to be a little bit warmer. And on the other hand, if I turn it below that number, it's gonna be a little bit cooler. So now I just need to decide which one I like better, a warmer image or a cooler image. And if I'm not getting the exact look I want, I can always play around with the original temperature. So for example, I can try to turn this up to about 6,000 Kelvin and then play around with this. So the differences here are pretty subtle and I like either setting. So here's a before, here's an after. I do like this image being a little bit warmer. I think it just looks a little bit better that way because there are some of those golden colors in the image. But ultimately it'll be up to you. And of course you could do the split preview option or you could set your preset here. You could save your preset and then come in here and open up your preset at a later date. But here you can see the after on the left and the before on the right. So a little bit warmer of an image on the left here. A little bit more yellows going on and that gold here is accentuated this gold lighting so i like that look so i'll go ahead and click ok and that'll apply my color temperature so you'll notice here that i didn't make any real major changes using the color temperature tool and that is a good thing to keep in mind when you're using this tool which is that you don't want to make any major adjustments and that's kind of the case across the board with the image adjustment tools you want to keep your adjustments subtle unless of course you are going for a very dramatic and a very specific effect all right, guys, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You can check out the entire 14 video Skillshare fundamentals of photo editing class with nearly two hours of content. And I'll include a link to that in the description of the video. Otherwise, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can check out our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 photo editing masterclass on Udemy, or you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.